Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Skippy and welcome to another video. Okay, so this is plans to be the last video of the build of the Grillo's Fokker DL1 triplane. This is where we're at so far. Uh, all the wings and electrics working. The rudder isn't attached yet because I'm going to wait until it's painted. Uh, need to sort out the um, piece of card that goes there to form the canopy and I just need to tidy up uh, the wiring on the cabanes there but otherwise everything has come together quite nicely. Um, what I need to do now is build the undercarriage with the lower wing. Um, need to bend the wire to give it some strength as I learned from the SE5A. Um, that's what we do there. Be using this piano wire uh, and as they used to say on Blue Peter, here's one that I made earlier. Um, before I thought about making the video, obviously, I forgot. Uh, that fits quite neatly over the template. So I'm going to make another one of these now. Uh, and then the plan is that I'm going to attach it to the bottom of the airplane. And like I did on the SE5A, wind some thread through the frame and then around this wire on the gear to give it a little bit more rigidity and stick it to uh, the model. Regards to the wing and the wheels and the axle, what I've already done is I've slot, cut a groove that the axle fits neatly into. That can then be super glued and doesn't rotate and I'll have the wheels rotating like I have here on a piece of wire, again, thin piano wire. And what I'm probably going to do though, because I don't want a big plug on the end, I want to be able to just bend the wire up. I'm going to have a short piece like this and I'm going to glue that into the slot on the underwing. Um, and then that will ensure that both wheels rotate freely individually. I have a neat little piece of bent wire um, on the end there. So I'm going to get on now and build uh, the wing. I will, I've already made a hole um, for where the wooden legs go. They slot in there. Um, I'll glue those in once I've put the wire on. Uh, and then I'll work out a neater way of attaching it to the underside of the fuselage. So I shall get on and do this and I'll probably just do photos as I go and maybe a video at the end of it to sum it all up and say how it went. Okay, so the building is pretty much completed now, as you can see from the photos earlier, sort of at the can or the cockpit area. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I've got the wheels ready to go on their axles, which will fit into the subwing. I've cut a groove in there. Obviously, this will be tidied up, um, and I've got the wire strengthening it. I may cover that bit of wire there that's sticking up. I've tied cotton on the front because that's more likely to be the one that takes the stronger hit. And having put the wooden extra pieces in there, I'm pretty confident at the moment, well, I'm happy at the moment that the rear strut should be strong enough. It's a very light model um, compared to when I made the SE5A. So I'm hoping that it won't take as much um, hit or won't be as heavy a hit when it lands. Hopefully I'll be flying it and landing it pro properly as well. Um, so what, I'm now, what I've been doing as well, I've created the decals ready. Um, by utilising the uh, ones that came with it and inverting the colours. That will then go over um, the size. I've sized up to the tail, which is good. I've got the demon ready to go, and then I've got the numerous crosses. Uh, they're not perfect size at the moment, so uh, 
what I'm going to do first though is I'm going to start doping up all the tissue to uh, tighten it all up, tidy it all up. Uh, once I've done the first layer, maybe a second layer, I'll then go around and tidy up all these loose bits, um, fill in any holes or patch anywhere that needs to be patched uh, and get it all nice and neat. Uh, and then I'll be able to look at uh, painting it. That's when I'll paint the engine and the cowling. Um, I'll probably just do a light coat of white on the tail for now. I need to glue that rear skid in. And what you notice there is I put a little bit of wire on it as well, just to strengthen it. I found that that worked with my bigger kits uh, and also with the SC5A because bolster just snaps. Um, so yeah, good progress. So let's get on with the doping. Okay, so I've done a complete first layer of dope. Uh, I did a 50-50 water mix and that's the easy dope. Um, you can see already it's drying out nicely, getting a good bit of tension in there. And actually the finish of the paper is looking quite good as it's drying. I can get better focus. It's actually looking like a nice satin finish. So I'm wondering whether I may get away without having to paint it, which would be rather good. Um, obviously I still need to tidy up some areas. So I'm going to let this properly dry uh, and then see what it looks like. But so far, so good. I think it's looking quite, quite smart like that. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I'm doing a model, I just get a little bit carried away and I forget that I should be doing photos and video clips. Um, so as you'll notice now, this has jumped and I have done a couple of photos, which is good. I've only done one coating of dope, but I really like the way the black tissue has come up with it. Um, I've painted the wood satin black uh, and I've also repatched some of the holes. So actually the whole model is looking a lot neater now. Notice I've glued the wheels on. You've seen from the photos that I'll have shown before this clip um, how I then stuck those on. Obviously I need to do another layer of dope to sort out that new tissue. Um, I've painted the motor, or the engine, sorry, uh, and the carrying for now and the, the uh, rudder. Um, I will do a little bit more touching up of those, same of the wheels. Um, so it's coming on really nicely. And I think I'm not gonna bother spraying rest of the model black. I'm actually just going to do another coat of dope now and it is a 50-50 wash. Oh yeah, I actually um, fixed in the rear skid. I've used a pin like I did on the SE5 just to secure that in. I'm anticipating that that will probably fall off on its first heavy landing, but for now at least it looks all right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do another coating of dope um, and then I'll look at Doing the decals but I'm really pleased how that's come out that's a really nice finish with just black tissue and 50 50 easy dope well I have decided to make machine guns for this model this is what I prepared earlier um, what I did was he cut it out to the minimum then using this block, I'll sand down on the back side there to thin out the plastic, turn it over and then cut it out using my scalpel, give it another nice sanding just to finish it off and then CA glue it together. And all being well, that one, oh, there we go, will turn into something like this, which will then be painted and fixed onto the model. Okay, second gun made. Um, little top tip I've discovered is when you're gluing it together, if you get the little gaps down the center, um, by applying some medium CA glue and then taking this dust from the filing and just rubbing it over the gap, it actually seems to fill it in quite nicely uh, or certainly reduces the gap uh, in that seal. Not so good there, but yeah, if you just take the, the sandings, run them over the glue, it fills it in and uh, hopefully that will give a little bit of extra strength. So a little top tip there for me, hopefully that will be good for you. So unusually I've not done any airbrushing on this model, this time I decided to keep as I said, the tissue that I used, which was black anyway, which was a good call, uh, doped up. I've painted the white tail 
over the white tissue. I've painted the white plastic for the motor. So that's a combination of base black and uh, silver. Uh, and I've brush painted the cowling. And what I now need to do is secure the cowling onto the front of the model. So to do that first, I've just drilled a little hole in the top, which will go through to the wooden block, which I showed uh, when I was building it. So there you go. I'll screw that one in place. Then I'll make sure that the motor inside rotates freely within the front of the cowl. Um, drill a little hole on the side, screw that in. Same on the other side, and then that'll be the cow nice and secure. And hopefully it will mean that the motor free rotates. All three screws nice and neatly in. And then the test is to see if it spins freely. No rubbing. So pretty good, happy with that. If we try and zoom in, there is a space all the way around. It's a little bit tighter at the bottom, but there's no friction, no rubbing on it anyway. So all good. To create um, the leather cockpits around, uh, I've used an old shoelace, something I thought of whilst I was having my coffee just now. Um, so I've super glued that around the edge, glued it in the center. Actually, I think it doesn't look too bad. So quite pleased with that. A little bit of um, utilization of a spare lace added in the drawer. Well, I've made quite a good bit of progress today. Uh, showed you earlier doing the shoelace for the leather round the cockpit. And I mounted the guns, machine guns, had to add a piece of wood there to raise them up so that they would uh, clear the front a little bit. They're not perfect, but they're not too bad. Quite pleased with that. Uh, moving on to the prop, it was the plain black prop. I've just given it a brown wash just to uh, give it a little bit more of a wood effect left a bit of the brush mark so hopefully that's not going to affect its balance uh, at all well hopefully not at all anyway um obviously the cows all fitted in i've added the wire ground loop at the back there the step and the loop on the other side as well um there is a mistake there which those of you if you spot it please put it in the comments below um but i'm pretty happy with how that's gone so yeah, I'm now at the stage where I can start putting the decals on and then that'll finish it off really nicely, I think. So moving on to the decals, um, it's very rare that I ever use the decals that come with the kits. I just don't really like the thickness of them. Uh, and also because I'm doing my own model type or my own representation of an aircraft, because don't forget this isn't a replica. I'm just doing a representation of that model because I quite like it. Um, I tend to use the decals that come with the model as a template for size. I'll then create them on paper to um, so the right scale, cut them out and then put them up against the model just to see how they look so I make sure that it does look right um, and then I'll print them onto the water slide decal paper which is a bit more expensive. Now originally I was going to use this demon um, which I used on my larger flare kit um, but I didn't like the fact it didn't actually have more of the flames or the smoke whatever it is coming off um, and I found this one um, so again with a little bit of Photoshop I'll cr I've created this which gives it a, it's a better size on this size model and I quite like the fact that it's got the whole plume all the way out to the front there um, so I've made sure that I've got everything measured up I've even done the weight piece although I'm not sure on this kit it will have it but if I can fit it on I'll put it in because I quite like the fact that I've achieved doing that as well um, when I actually make the decal I'll cut around it to soften the edges uh, and then if any white shows from underneath, I'll just do a thin black line to cover it over. Um, so printing onto water slide decal paper. This is the finished product that I've got here. I'm very happy with how it's come out, nice and clear. Um, obviously, I won't be using all of this tail section. I'll probably just use the crosses now because these are just Grillo's pieces, I believe. Um, so that's the main picture bits. And then obviously the crosses underneath. Uh, there I let it dry for a good half an hour I've then given it several coats of satin varnish to hopefully seal the ink in um, so before I use these decals here I'll just try the cross on the back um, this is easier to replace uh, and obviously I'll put it onto the rudder there one thing I haven't done on the build yet is connected a control horn for that rudder um, or glued the rudder on um, I'll do that once the decal is nicely secured 
So the next step is to put the decals on and um, hopefully have it looking something like that by the time it's finished. We have the finished Grillo's Fokker DL1 triplane. S3X is all working. The battery fits neatly into the section in there. All the services are work or surfaces, sorry, are working as they should. Ailerons. Rudder need to reverse that. Elevator. And give it a pop a little tweak. Now one thing I've noticed there's a slight rubbing with the prop. And it's at the bottom piece there, if you can see it. Literally just at the bottom there. And here it's not quite a nice tone. There's plenty of power from that motor when I uh, wound it up just a minute ago, which is really good. Um, the red light doesn't shine through too much, so I'm very happy with that. But I think that's come out really nicely. It's all decaled up. I've sealed it with um, the non -satin, oh, sorry, the satin varnish. Um, so all that's really left to do now is get the maiden flight in. Now the good news about that, we lost our club at the end of last year, but through negotiations with the landlord, um, myself and the chairman have now managed to get permission to fly back at our old club. So hopefully from the coast of April, we'll be flying there, and that's why I hope to do the maiden of this aeroplane. So please stand by for the next part of this video series. I'm going on holiday for a week or two, so there is going to be a break, for which I apologise. Um, but when I come back, hopefully we'll get this flying. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support and keep subscribing.